Welcome back, everyone. Uh, we are on day three with Dr. Bach as we look at the next five to 10 years, what that might look like for him as he continues to serve in the area and teach on the topic cultural engagement. What might you have to share with us in this area? What does the next five to 10 years, what would that look like for you, Dr. Bach? Well, I, I think it's just continuing to do work in all these areas. I'm not sure how much, in one sense, things are changing pretty quickly around us. And depending on where we are in the world, one of the things that I like to say is the world is both bigger and smaller simultaneously. There are more people in it, but we're also more tightly connected. So uh, I think one of the challenges of cultural engagement, it exists now, I don't think it's gonna change greatly in the next five or 10 years, but there'll just be more of it, is our awareness of, of our pluralism, our awareness of the variety of communities that we interact with and that we get exposed to and that we have to, to uh, engage. And uh, the challenge has been, the church has been used to kind of engaging one or maybe two or three communities at a time now it, ha it has to learn how to engage um, multiple communities at a time and people with a wider array of backgrounds, wider religious backgrounds, that kind of thing. The challenge of that on leaders is, is significant because uh, obviously um, the background of the people that you're interacting with impacts how you minister to them. So uh, at a global scale, I think that's the most fundamental challenge and in the next five or 10 years, I don't think it's gonna change so much as it's gonna become more intense. Um, as we communicate more and more, as we're more tightly connected on the communication level, as people get access to more worlds, if I can say it that way, yeah. um, and what they're exposed to, that raises all kinds of questions for the church leader about how to minister to people whose world has become uh, larger uh, and whose exposure to things has become larger. So I would say that's the biggest challenge in cultural engagement. And cultural engagement is a read and react area where you're responding to what's going on around you. Um, and so it's constantly changing. It's a little bit like, and this is a danger in using an illustration that attempts to be global, but it's a little bit like being in a soccer match and bringing a ball up from the midfield to try and figure out what exactly is the angle of pass I need to make to hit the forward so that he can score the goal? Yeah. And, and you're reacting not only to what your position is and how you're carrying the ball, but where the defense is and, and where the angles are that might let the ball go through. It's a read and react uh, discipline. And the ability to read and react well with the variety of things that are thrown at you is really a challenge. And so, the main thing about cultural engagement, no matter when it is, no matter what time window we're talking about, is the dynamic that comes with it that requires real skill in being able to manage the changing dynamics that are always there. How might the church prepare for this sort of engagement when you know, globalization is such a thing of today? And as you've said, many religions are sort of either clashing or grouping together and sometimes you know not everybody fully understands the theology of what they believe uh how might the church prepare themselves for this well i think it's really important that leaders get access to resources that can help them think through what they're seeing around them and not try and rely just on them on themselves the world is loaded with such resources. If you, have, if you are able to listen to this and have access to a computer or a cell phone through the internet so that you can see me, then you have access to the many of these kinds of resources in many cases. And it may or may not be in your language, but there may be ways to encourage organizations that work in your language to get access to these resources and to translate them so that they can be made available. I think that's a, a challenge that exists. But if, if, you can, if you're able to understand me and my English, then there are lots of resources that you have access to and, uh, and they can help you in the particular areas. Uh, and I, I would assume that, uh, that uh, the GPRO Commission and, and, and the Gospel Proclamation Commission 
can help people get access to some of those resources, identify them and, and make them so that uh, they can be uh, accessed by a click or whatever so that people can see what's out there. Definitely, we do have a bunch of resources on gprolearning.org. Uh, so people can check out that website to find more info. Thank you so much for joining us today, Dr. Bach. And tomorrow we'll be looking at uh, what might trainers and pastors expect as they look towards going into this field.